Good morning, everybody. I hope you're all doing well. Today's video is just to bring you into the London Open. All right, so I said, I said I'd start doing this little series of videos. I'm going to try and get them done as many times as possible throughout the week. Ideally, I'll be aiming to do them on a Tuesday, Wednesday, and a Thursday. And today is sort of a trial run. So what do we know? Bitcoin has made the move to the upside. Fine. Happy days. We know we've got volatility in the chart. A lot of people are asking the question, is Bitcoin going to continue up from this point? At maximum, we could assume that Bitcoin could come up back into this range right here. OK, because there is a lot of interest in this area, which is why when they move price to the upside, regardless of what motivated this movement, they had every reason to come up because of the short liquidations that are present in the chart. OK, shorts have been making a killing lately and they haven't paid themselves. And these are the sort of moves that shake out the retail traders. You can see how fast they actually move to and from different zones, which is why I say to you, get used to paying yourselves, guys. Are you traders or are you investors? All right. An investor isn't looking to pay himself in a, in a more sooner than later as such. OK, he's more important. He's more concerned about the bigger picture. All right. And if you are a trader, you pay yourself as often as you can, because this is an ATM. OK, it is a cash machine. Now, it's a cash machine for the market makers, but it can be a cash machine for yourself if you have profitable positions and you close them and take the money. There is no glory in holding a profitable position that's not closed in profit. Do you understand what I'm saying? You can have your balance that shows, look, I'm in green. I've got $2,000 profitable position. Cool. It drops to $1,500. That's not $2,000 profit anymore. It's $1,500. You just lost $500. You do the same thing. Down it goes. $1,000. You've just lost $1,000. And you're still going on about a $1,000 position. Pay yourself, man. But I can bet you'll close it when it gets to like, two three hundred dollars but you won't close it when it's at two thousand dollars and it's one of those moments where you need to scratch your head and say why on earth would you do that yeah you wouldn't close it at a two thousand dollar gain right and you're reluctant to close it now at a two thousand dollar loss like what's going on yeah so always get into the mind frame of paying yourselves keep putting it in your head pay yourself pay yourself pay yourself get a post-it put it at the top when you come to the charts every single day, just get, look, Trading View blesses us with the opportunity to actually write. Yeah? Start your trading day. Pay yourself. Done. Leave it up there. So that when you're doing your analysis and you're saying, okay, I've got a $2,000 profitable position, cool, you're seeing it right there in the chart. Pay yourself. Keep it noted. Pay yourself. The more you try and ignore it, the less likely you're going to see that success in trading. Pay yourself. So... What can we expect Bitcoin to do? So quite frankly, ladies and gentlemen, we have got price bouncing in and around the daily open zone. Naturally, as the vector candles would imply, these are imbalances in the chart that we expect them to come back down to. Will they come back to them now or will they come back to them later on? A lot of people are assuming that this could be the turn point that Bitcoin could move higher from here. It's not enough, ladies and gentlemen. Principle would say we would need the following. Another retrace, come back down, test the intention. Zoom out onto the higher time frames. What do we have? We do have this monster, absolute monster of a W formation. Okay. We've come down completely into the blue vector candle zone. I'm happy with this structure. This looks like a big pattern that could play out. Everything about it is showing that they could move out higher. And do they have every reason to? Of course they do. Why? Because this information about the war has been absorbed now. The market has absorbed it. All right. Russia's doing what it's doing to Ukraine. Countries are now getting involved in providing aid for Ukraine. It's just the standard routine. The marketplace will always absorb the idea of fear into the charts of war sooner than later. All right. Now, given that it's cryptocurrency, things can change at any moment and you have to be cool with that. As it stands right now, the W formation criteria seems to be holding. All right. As long as it holds and price trails away from this point right here. The thing that you want to be looking for is you want to see a push, a vector push to the upside. Now, remember, look, this is on the one hour, on the four hour time frame. OK, 
we want to see Bitcoin move progressively up. So the journey itself could end up like this. We could see price coming back down, stabilizing, moving up slowly but surely, and then big pump up, retrace, continue, and then start to hit these previous zones right here, which will take us to the 800 EMA, which is where it's a key point in the chart for us to understand if they're going to show resistance from that point. All right. They haven't hit the 800 yet, ladies and gentlemen. So we need to be mindful of that. And that's on the four hour chart. Okay. Which is the 200 EMA on the daily. So it's really important that zone. All right. That's what we're looking for with Bitcoin. Coming into the London session itself to all my London traders. It might be a little bit of a quiet day today, guys. All right. You can see what's going on there up and down in the daily open. Just be mindful of these ranges. OK, you don't always have to trade every day. Friday is a day that I try and avoid trading completely. If I get volatility, I'm going to exploit it on a scalp. Happy days. OK. Now, last night I was talking with a few of the I was doing a couple of trades last night with the Patreons. And we were just talking just quick scalps. And I just really wanted to try and get the idea of let me show you. Where is it? Is it this one? Yeah, so this was taking this scalp, all right, in on the highs of Bitcoin, okay? So what I wanted to establish here was the following. It was in this area of the candlestick right here. Now, this is what you want to look for, guys, when you're trying to scalp, okay? You pull up the chart on the one minute time frame. Now, of course, it was, it was what time was it? It was in this area here, okay? So, yeah, it was in this zone right here. That was the zone. Now, we had just had this big move to the upside. Now, this is just a little a scalping technique, okay? We've seen this move to the upside, okay? Price comes down into the 50 EMA. This move right here was an indication that they'd wanted to push price higher. So, I said to myself, all right, what are the chances of them doing the same thing again? All right? And they did just that. Now, when I took the trade, if we actually look at it on the chart, it was only for like a short moment in time. We saw that that candlestick right there, because this was on the five minute. That zone right there was the first hit on the five minute. So if we actually go over to the five minute time frame, all right. Now, of course, I know it's different because this is on Binance. But you can see it was this, this candlestick right here. All right. No, sorry. It was that one. There we go. It was this candlestick right here. Now, because of the way price had moved already, Sydney, in essence, was trying to absorb the idea of what has happened here. So when they pushed price all the way to the downside, all right, they had come all the way back up. Now, I was waiting to see if the daily open itself was going to play out. And it did just that. It spiked to the upside. Now, my entry point itself was in this zone right here on this push of this vector candle zone on the recovery you know, right there. So that was actually, I didn't even put it down what the position was. Shoot. It was this green vector candle right here. From my knowledge, I was in on that candlestick. Yeah, right there. Naturally, when you see this vector candlestick, you look to the left to try and establish if they're likely to take this zone. Okay? Because that's all you've got. If the momentum is present in the chart, they already tried it here. We're anticipating another move to the upside. Okay? That move happened. I closed it just, just after this candlestick right here was in... It was this area right here that I closed it. After I took the picture, done. What had they done? They come back into the previous wick. All right? So here's an example of how they look towards the previous wicks. Again, look at this. This area here. They come back up straight, done. One, two, three, four, 20 minutes work, job done, out. Complete leave. Not interested in what it does. I have the discipline to get out of the trade in a scalper's perspective. Again, anyone that considers trading, make sure you establish what you are. Are you a scalper or are you a swing trader or are you just a position trader where you're holding positions for a long time, okay? Make the distinction because you can't manage a scalp with the mentality of a swing trader. Yeah, you can't do it. It's not going to work. You're going to put too much pressure on yourself. All right. Cool. Ethereum. 
Ethereum's play right here, holding in and around the daily open. Everything seems to be holding the daily open. Are they waiting for New York? Because we haven't seen that much of a manipulative play in the brinks. Okay, and now we've come into New York 9 o'clock. I mean, sorry, UK 9 o'clock. I'm not really seeing the volatility just yet. All right? So we just need to see what happens in the New York session. It's Friday today, guys. So we could see the manipulation happen in New York. UK may hold it. Asia hasn't really done much in this session. And this trade session itself has been very small. All right. So that's really also important. If the session of Asia is small, something is brewing. Because if they haven't moved price in an aggressive way, then there's no manipulation in the chart. They haven't increased uh, the chances of an imbalance. They're not pushing it anywhere. This, this containment of price is giving us a reason to believe something might happen very shortly. We may even get the stop hunt rise in this area here to test the psychological range for Ethereum. And they may even just come up and drop back down again. Or they could just simply come back up into these zones right here. So just be mindful of that. All right. So, guys, I didn't want to keep this video too long. Mad love and respect for you all passing through to today. I hope that this little video is going to serve its purpose. Coming into next week, we're going to be doing more of these videos at the start of the UK session. Other than that, guys, be sure to like and subscribe. Mad love and respect. And I will speak to you later on. Take care yourselves. Peace.